Okay, sorry for your confusion, because uh, actually POSCO suddenly changes the uh, schedule for the uh, lecture, my lecture in the POSCO, so uh, I have to do, I have to <laughs> send you very uh, urgent message uh, with very short notice. I'm very sorry about it. And in coming Thursday, as I mean, I announced I would definitely go to the POSCO, so there was no class on the Thursday. Okay, today we will think about, today and the next lectures, we will think about the gross behavior in the ternary system. In previous class, we have handles how we uh, can think about the growth of the uh, ferrite in the binary alloy. Binary means that the alloy of the iron and carbon system. But when we consider the growth in growth of ferrite or other uh, phase in the tunnel system, it is quite, quite different from the uh, binary system. And I will discuss what would be the difference between the binary system and the ternary system. We already know about this type of the uh, gross kinetics here. Cosine is the thickness or the location of interface between the parent space and growing space. And the location of interface is proportional to the square root of time. And the proportional constant alpha determines everything, which is called parabolic growth rate constant. In binary system, we can, what we have to do is to evaluate this parabolic growth rate constant, then everything will be fixed. The governing equation, which gives the value of parabolic growth rate constant is given by this one. So you already already familiar with this equation because we derive the details. And as you can see, when we put the lambda as R part divided by two scale root d, then by solving this equation, this nonlinear equation, we can evaluate lambda. That means we can evaluate alpha. Right? Here, the left side value is called supersaturation. And this value, it C0 is the overall composition of the alloy. And CM means the equilibrium concentration of the solute in parent's, parent side. And CP means the equilibrium concentration at the interface in the product phase side. So everything is fine. And we have to, what we have to do is to evaluating the interface composition. Then by solving the, the nonlinear non equation, you can obtain the parabolic growth rate constant. In the binary system, when we fix the temperature and pressure, pressure, then the interface concentration is automatically fixed by phase diagram. Right? When we pick up the temperatures, then the interface composition in parent side and product phase size is given by the composition in the phase boundary. Here, so if we consider the growth of alpha into gamma, where the overall composition is C0, then the composition 
of the interface in austenite size is given by this C gamma alpha and the concentration of the carbon in product page size is given by C alpha gamma. Then you can determine the supersaturation and put those value into the governing equation. Here, you can evaluate lambda. It means you can evaluate probability rate constant, and everything is solved. It's quite straightforward. But the situation is quite different when you consider the growth in the ternary system. What makes it quite diff different from the binary alloy? You will see. <laughs> yeah. For describing the local equilibrium in the ternary system, which means that to describing the equilibrium at the interface, you have to know four unknown value, which means that the concentration of the solute in parent side and concentration of solute in product pay side. So now we have two solute because we are handling in the ternary system, there are solute one and solute two, and solute one and solute two in beta and alpha side. So to describing the local equilibrium at the interface, we have to know four unknown. But the equation available is this one. And the number of equations we have is only three. The equilibrium of solvent at alpha and beta, solute one and alpha and beta, and solute two alpha and beta. You can also know that issue by Gibbs page rule. Here, the comp number of components is three, and page is now we handling two phase region, phase two. So the number of freedom is three. So when you fix temperatures and pressure, the degree of freedom is one. So we have to fix, or we have to have one more equation to get this unknown. That means when you consider the two-page equilibrium in ternary or higher order system, there will be many, many combination of interface composition which can equilibrate the chemical potential of each solute element. Here is the example. This is iron carbon manganese ternary phase diagram at 800 degrees Celsius. And this is alpha and this gamma region and this is two page region where the ferrite and austenite coexist. Here the this red up <laughs> green, green line is called tie line. And each end of this green line indicate the pair of the composition of the solute, mangan, and carbon, which can be in equilibrium state, which means that when you consider concentration of carbon in this ferrite and concentration of carbon and manganese in austenite in, given by this point, the chemical composition of carbon and mangan in two phase is the same. That means any composition which is the combination given by this tie line can be the 
interface composition during the growth of ferrite into the austenite. So the problem when we handling the growth of ternary or higher order system is to pick which tie line really representing, which tie line is really representing the interface composition during the growth. That is central critical issue. Which tyrant will be the operating tyrant? Okay? So, the major thing we have to do in this class is to understand which tyrant will be the operating tyrant among these countries combination of the composition. <clears throat> this can be done by combination of the diffusion equation and flux balance equation, which we already handled in the binary alloy system. This is diffusion equation, fixed first law in the ternary system. Here, without this term and this term, that is exactly equivalent to the fixed first law, which describe the flux, which is dependent on the concentration gradient. Here, this 1, 1 and 2, 2 is the diffusivity of solute 1 and 2. And here, 1, 2 means the flux dependence of the flux of sol solute 1 on the concentration gradient of solute 2. It is natural that the solute one, the flux of solute one is dependent, basically dependent on the concentration gradient of solute one, but it also depends on the concentration gradient of solute two. Right? Clear? Not clear? Because the existence of the solute two can affect the chemical potential of the solute one, right? In previous homework, you have handles. You have solved that the existence of the mangan can affect the chemical potential of carbon, right? So in that way, the presence of solute two and the concentration gradient can affect the flux of atomic flux of solute one. Of course, this D12 is quite small compared to D11, but we have to know the effect exists, right? So in rigorous form, the flux of solute one is dry, uh, can be written down in this form and Flux 2 also can be written down in this form. So when we assume the diffusivity is not strongly depends on the concentration itself, but then we can derive the fifth second law in this form. So at first, let's assume that these two terms is small enough to ignore at first, let's assume. Then we can write down the diffusion equation in this form.
And similarly, we consider flux balance here. The psi is the location of the interface, and psi dot means the velocity. So you can understand this is describing the flux balance of the solute one and solute two as the movement of the interface with the movement of the interface. So now we have two parallel equations, this one and this one and this one and this one, right? So we can solve, we can solve this equation by combining this one and this one and this one and this one, right? There is no dependence between this and <coughs> this. So as we did in the binary alloy system, we can derive this equation for solute one and this equation for solute two. Everyone is okay so far? Here, lambda one, is as we defined in the binary system <laughs> given by this one. So here is lambda one is r part divided by two square root d11. And lambda two will be r part divided by two square root d22. Here you have to notice that we write down the same value alpha. Why? What is the meaning of alpha? When we know the value of alpha, then it means we know the location of the interface, right? In the tunnel system, even though we have two kinds of sol solute, but the interface itself between the ferrite and austenite is unique, right? There is only one interface. Okay? So it means whether we use this equation or this equation to locate the interface we have to have the same position. Okay. So, this equation and this equation can be related with unique value of alpha. Right? By this relationship, we can have another hidden equation to specify the location of the interface and to specify which tie line will be the operating tie line. And you have noticed that it depends, it strongly depends on diffusivity of each solute element. Okay? If you, un if you can understand this matter, everything will be easy. So as I mentioned, determining the interface composition in parent side and product phase size 
is to determine which pipeline will be describe the interface composition, which to determine which tie-line will be the operating tie-line. And as I mentioned, it strongly depends on the diffusivity of each solute element, in particular, the ratio of the diffusivity. At first, let's assume the simplest case. When the diffusivity of solute one and solute two is the same, then as you can see from this graph, this function is monotonously increasing function, right? This function is monotonously increased with respect to the lambda. So when D11 and D22 is the same, the supersaturation of solute 1 and solute 2 should be the same. All right? So what you have to do is to pick up the tie line where the supersaturation of solute one and solute two is the same. Then, how about when solute one diffusivity, diffusion of solute one is faster than solute two? It means that lambda one is smaller than lambda two, right? Fast diffusion means that larger value of D1, right? So when we assume the faster diffusion of solute one, then lambda one is smaller than lambda two. And because the function itself is monotonously increasing function, so the supersaturation of solute one is smaller than the supersaturation of solute two, right? Everyone clear? That is natural because when we consider the movement of, of interface, and let's see the diffusion of lambda one is faster than the diffusion of lambda two, then the supersaturation of lambda 2 should be larger because it, the supersaturation itself, the steepness of concentration gradient. So for atom 2, which is slower diffusion, to keep pace with atom 1, it should have steeper concentration gradient. Okay. So let's consider several cases. As I mentioned, where, where, when the diffusivity of solute one is the same to the solute two. Then, as I mentioned, the supersaturation should be the same. Among, let's consider this kind of phase boundary and alpha, alpha gamma, and gamma, which is typical case in ion mangan carbon system or ion nickel carbon system. There is various tie line which is available for the equilibrium at the interface, but which tie line give you the same supersaturation of solute one and solute two? The tie line which pass through the original composition. 
right? What is the supersaturation? Supersaturation means the length of this one and the length of this one. And the length of this one and the length of this one. This one. So the tie line, the only tie line which gives you the same supersaturation of solo to one and solo two is the tie line passing through the original composition. So when the Diffusivity of solo to one and solo to two is the same, then the operating tie line will, the tie line passing through the original composition. Okay? So, then how the situation, how does the situation change when one of the divisibility of one solute element is larger than the other? For example, the divisibility of solute one is larger than the solute two, then the supersaturation of solute two should be larger than solute one. So let's consider two movement, two case of tie line, which is upper, which is, which locate upper the original co concentration, which is located in lower side of the original concentration. Which side of the tie line will increase the supersaturation of solo two? The supersaturation of solo two in this case is this this divide this length divided by this one, right? And this one is this length divided by this one. Which side? Which side of the tie line will increase the supersaturation? This side of tie line, the upper side tie line will increase the supersaturation of solute two. Of course, it depends on the shape of page boundary. Even though we use, we now we consider this kind of page boundary, but sometimes the page boundary is given by is um, like this shape. So it depends on the shape of the page boundary and the shape of the tie line. But in this case, you can understand this tie line have much higher chance to be a uh, operating tie line. So now you can understand when the diffusivity of these two solute atom is different, then the operating tie line is not the tie line which passing through the original composition and it deviates. Okay. So many students are likely to think about that when they are, they were asking, they, some people ask them which tie line will be the operating tie line. They just pick up the tie line which passed through the original composition. But that is not true in general. The operating tie line which passing through the original composition, the tie line passing through the original composition can be operating tie line when the diffusivity of two concentra uh, two solute atom is the same. If the diffusivity, there is some difference in diffusivity, the operating tie line is apart from the tie line which passing through the original 
composition. <clears throat> it will be particularly interesting when we consider one diffusivity of one solo atom is very, very large compared to the other one. It is exactly the same case when we consider the ion, carbon, and one solute, substance solute atom. Because the diffusivity of carbon is 10 to 4, 10 to 6 times larger, faster than the diffusivity of mangan or silicon or other uh, substitution element. In this case, by considering this case, we can have some understanding the growth of the ferrite from the austenite. Here, let's assume that one represented carbon and two represent the substitution alloy element. And the diffusivity of one salt to one is far larger than the diffusivity of substitution alloy element. It means that as we considered previously, the supersaturation of solute 2 should be far larger than the supersaturation of solute 1. Right? So at first, let's consider that the lambda 1 has some finite value, which means that gross rate is quite large, so the growth rate divided by the parabolic growth rate constant divided by the diffusivity has some value between, for example, 0, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 in some finite region. No, no, this value. When lambda 1 has some finite value, it means that omega 1 should have some finite value. In this case, lambda 2 should, very, should have very large value, right? Because the difference between D11 and D22 is very large. So if lam lambda 1 has some finite value, then lambda 2 has very large value, which means that the supersaturation of the solo 2 should be close to 1. If the lambda 2 has very, very large value, then the supersaturation should be close to 1. In other case, lambda 2 has some finite value then the supersaturation of solute 2 has some, some value, finite value. Then lambda 1 should be close to 0 because D11 is far larger than the D22. Then lambda 2 is located somewhere around here. It means that supersaturation of solute 1 is near zero. Okay? So it means that if lambda 1 or lambda 2 has some finite value, then it's opposite the other. The, the supersaturation of the other element should be 1 or 0. Okay. Then how it appears in the page diagram? Here, the composition along this line, original composition along this line means that supersaturation of Solute 2 has some finite value. 
right? When the original composition located between these two values, it, mean, it means that the supersaturation of solute 2 has some finite value. In that case, the supersaturation of solute 1 should be 0, should be almost 0. The only way to to satisfy that criterion is this line, right? When the composition, original composition is located in this line, then the supersaturation of solute one is zero, but the supersaturation of solute two has some finite value. And similarly, when the original composition is located between these two interval. The only way to make the supersaturation of solute 2 1 is the original composition should be located on this line. Okay? It means that the original composition which located on these two lines share this tie line as an operating tie line. Whatever the original composition, if the original composition located on this line, then the operating tie line is given by this one. It means that the original composition located on these two lines share this tie line as an operating tie line. This is the concept of interface composition contour. Interface composition contour means the set of alloy composition which share the specific tie line as an operating tie line. When, remember, when the two divisibility, two, the divisibility of two solute atom is the same, then all the composition on this tie line share this tie line which passing through the original composition, right? When one, the diffusivity of one solute element is very large than the other, then the original composition located on these two lines share this tie line as an operating tie line. Technically, the interface composition contour can be uh, calculated for given tie line. For given tie line, we know the interface composition and put this interface composition and calculate the original composition at, by changing the alpha value. When you put these four value, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one is known. And this is a function of alpha. So 
by changing, by calculating the C01 and C02 with respect to various alpha value, then you can pointing out, you can point out the location of the original composition, which share this interface composition during the growth of the product page. Okay? That means even though the alloy composition located on this line share this tie line as an operating tie line, the alpha value will be different for each other composition. The different alpha value means the growth rate of the product phase will be different for all alloy system, even though they share the same tie line as interface com composition. In similar way, we can draw the interface velocity con contour, which means that the composition, alloy composition, which have the same growth rate. This can be done by fixed alpha value because we now we are interested in the same growth rate. We have to fix the alpha value and calculate the original composition at by varying the interface composition from various tie line. Then every point on this line indicating the composition which have the same growth rate. So for when the diffusivity of two solute atoms is the same, it is somewhat parallel line to these two phase boundary. And when one, the diffusivity of one solute atom is far larger than it focused on this point and this point, and this point and this point. And you can, you can see the two page region can be divided by two region, which boundary is given by this one. In next time, I will have a chance to talk about it. These two region is very characteristic region. And the upper side, upper side of two page region, the growth is controlled by the diffusion of substitutional alloying element. So the growth rate is very slow. In low region, the region, the growth rate is controlled by the diffusion of fast diffusion, which is carbon in ion-based alloy system. This right. Yeah, strictly speaking, on that line, the growth rate is controlled by the both one. But uh, you can see the meaning of that line in the next class.
actually this line this line is project line of this point. When you construct this triangle for various tie lines, then the trace of this line goes through this. And the trace of that point construct this red line. And you can see that when the alloy composition is located on this point, which means that the supersaturation of solo 2 has finite value, but the supersaturation of solo 2, 1 is nearly 0 which means that the alloy composition on this line, the concentration of gradient, concentration gradient carbon is very flat. That means the supersaturation is nearly zero. And the uh, concentration of solo two has some, some, some value, finite value. With those kind of concentration gradient, the diffusion of substitutional alloy element can keep pace with carbon because the diffusion of carbon is very slow due to its flat concentration gradient. On this line, the concentration gradient of carbon is quite typical one, but the concentration gradient of solo two has very unique shape, which is called concentration spike. I will talk this matter in next class. Okay? Any question? This one is always represent in this kind of condition. So when you look at this kind, this, this, this uh, boundary, it means that the diffusivity of solo to one and solo two is quite different. So when two, the diffusivity of two solo to element is the same, the operating tie line always located on the original composition. The tie line should go, should passing, should pass through the original composition. There are there are many tie line, there are many tie line. So. The only thing you have to do is to pick up the tie line passing through the original composition because that is the operating tie line when the diffusivity of two solid elements is the same. Okay? Not okay? The concept of what I talked to this class is very important. And I uploaded three papers, three very good and unique and mathematically beautiful description on uh, this concept. And I, I hope you can read it for the further understanding. Any question? No? Okay, then see you in next Tuesday.